today? What? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I asked Satan a couple days ago and he's not here, so I guess it's just you and I. Uh, oh, I never changed this. There we go. Okay. So, goalie wash. Yeah, there you go. Now I can. Well, we're doing goalie wash. Uh, uh. Okay. Don't worry, I have a friend who forgets to push her push truck all the time. So I thought you were just doing that, and I was like, uh. I have a, uh, I had a whisper key. On the key I'd used to push to talk for OBS, uh, so so it was silencing me a mumble every time I was talking to the stream, but awkward. yeah. So yeah, Satan's gone. We're doing goalie yeah. wash, and maybe he'll come back. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe he'll show up halfway through, but yeah, goalie wash. So do you like goalie wash? Mm -hmm. I, I haven't played uh, goalie uh, wash. You haven't played Ghost as Pyro? Oh uh, yeah, I've played it as Pyro, but I haven't played it with DK yet, so I don't know what uh, I don't know well, what we do. Um, Goli Wash at the highest level is really fun because the mids are usually you just run up and protect your demo man and check for spy, and once you can't find him, then you just go off and do your own thing. Because like usually what the spy likes to do is he'll come from like this angle over here, he'll come from spiral, or he'll come from behind here, and it's really not hard to watch these things when you're like positioned like right here. Well, more over here, so you don't get sniped, but... It all just depends on what classes go down at this mid, I think. Because if, like, your demo goes down, you're pretty much gonna have to back up, because there's not really much you can do from, like, contesting the point. But, I know other pyros, like, um, Satan and Zygnus like to be really aggressive on this mid, so I can't really speak for them, but... Sometimes I remember Satan just, like, coming up this side, like, the enemy team, and just, like... Flaring something important than just getting the kill and walking away. So you could do that if you wanted to, but I'm not really an aggressive pyro on this map unless like we have the point or something. Yeah, I'm probably gonna stay to keep Meta Wii alive or to keep our combo alive because I guess that kind of works, especially on DK. Uh, keeping but, your sniper yeah. alive would be really good too, because especially since it's Axio, like if you can get picks on mid, then you pretty much have the mid in the bag. Yeah. Uh, so I guess mid is a good place to start because it's where you start in matches too. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you um, you talked about going up either side. Uh, it kind of just depends what your team calls. Like if um your team wants to roll on your side, then your combo will probably go up spiral, and you can just follow them. Sometimes what my team likes to do is we'll just like say let's go left, and we'll come out from shutter like from second. And we'll just literally walk up this like yard and come in through here and beat our demo man. But other than that, if we're not going up our side, then we're going up their side, and usually that means they're going up our side as well. So we just protect what's important. And the spy is really predictable in this. End. Like, there's not many spots he can hide. Like, he can come in through like three angles I talked about, or he can like hide on like these wooden planks over here, and that's about it. And maybe that barrel over there. It's about all he has. He can jump on, jump off these boxes and do like tricky things, but that's about it. It's kind of annoying for Spy on this mid, I think, because there's really not m many options they have. Yeah, and I watch drop down too, so yeah, because a soldier, a soldier, or an engineer, or somebody's gonna drop up, drop down, and or a pyro. Yeah, or a pyro, and they're gonna have a bad day if you're there. Mm -hmm. I remember once from against DK in seasons past. This was when Velas was on DK. He came up through this, uh, this, what's it called again, drop down, through like, the detonator and came up with background and just killed Harblue. And he's like, what? How did Pyro get there? And I was like, <laughs> <"Harp> Harblue. <laughs> <laughs> but that only works once against any team. Yeah, like, another mid and everyone just, like, killed him. <laughs> yeah. So you could do that once and get a funny med pick or something. And, and then never do it again. Pretty much, but hey, it's funny that one time. Yeah, so... Uh, mid. So should we go if you win mid or if you lose mid now? Um, if you win mid, then 
you're free to you start capping the point, or you can like go over here with your combo. And if you haven't seen the spy, obviously you spy checking. Um, if you kill the spy, you're free to go big door and help out your comp or your flank. But um, it just kind of depends on what you think is best. Like, if you think your combo is gonna be fine, like for example, say you killed their medic and your medic is still up, obviously they they have advantage. And if the spy's down, then you're free to go on the flank because you're not really needed because your medic at at any level should be smart enough to pop if he's in danger, and he shouldn't be peeking the sniper. So it really just depends on what you think is best. Like. It just kind of depends what goes down, like their med goes down, the demo goes down, anything in the enemy combo goes down, you're probably not needed in the combo. And if anything, your flank goes down, you could probably go flank and vice versa. Um, if you lose mid, then you don't really want to stick around without numbers, so you just back up to second and, and hold until numbers come back up. Um, one thing I see people do a lot is that, like, say if you're defending, like, and ultimately you probably won't be, like, over here, because, like, yeah, the combo could come in through, like, this choke, and you can deny them, but at this point, it's not really worth risking your... I'm gonna say it's not really worth risking your life to blow back this uber, because if you lost mid, then something important died, and there's no reason for you to die as well, because then your spawns will be desync. But if they... if they're, like, not, like, milking properly, I guess you could... Well, it's kind of hard to say, actually. Yeah, I mean... I suppose if they're gonna push in, like, to the point where you're gonna be standing here, then yeah. you probably I mean, should be back, like, in lobby, I guess. Because at that point, defense, yeah. yeah. Yeah, at that point they feel confident enough to walk in and just go, so... If you've I mean, lost too much on... Yeah. If your team calls to be up here, then yeah, be up here, but otherwise you should probably be in a passive position. That's something I can really think of. But, Gully Watch is really fun, because you don't have to like strictly stay with the combo, like, you can just go around and make plays and be on the flank and all that, so that's why I like it a lot. Plus it's like my team's favorite map, so, bias. Uh, okay, so that's, I guess, defending second, attacking second, you said go on the flank, if you, if you haven't seen the spy. Yeah. Uh, if your combo's walking through choke, please, please look up. Look up, please. People look, will do that. Yeah. They're clever. Yeah. But um, like the thing is about gully wash is like you're not necessarily like forced to go with the combo or the flank. You can go like wherever's best. Cause like if you're up, just if you're a pyro like pushing through a choke, just don't be like that pyro that just absorb seals like I do. Like, something I have really, like, big trouble with is that I'll, I'll want to push with my combo and I'll be, like, a little passive about it and then I'll, like, poke my head out. But, like, you kind of have to be careful because you don't want to be eating the same damage your demo man and your heavy and whatever other combo classes are there. So if you're going to poke and do damage, it's fine. You just have to make sure you're not taking damage for it. Like, optimally with, like, with a buff or, like, doing damage around this corner and just, like, air blasting people as they come forth. And just make sure the sniper's not watching you, like, right here. Oh yeah, because the sniper will peek the choke. Especially with like the new meta how it is now, the sniper will just sit with the combo and be buffed and be tanked until they kill an enemy sniper. But yeah, like you can do damage like if you want to be with the combo, just be careful about it. And if you see the sniper, just don't peek the sniper. Sightlines, sightlines. So, attacking second, you know, you get in, you you get the point. So now. I guess it's time to take lobby or river. Um, so you kind of take both as you walk into lobby because like everyone will just kind of naturally spread out. Like your combo will probably hold like around here. Your sniper will probably be peeking this choke right here. Um, your NG will be around here. Your your flank will be up in river. So if your team's just like stalemating and not doing anything, obviously just be conscious of the spy. But you can also just go in river and like try and make some picks. Like if you guys can get picks in river, like if there's sniper speaking and like your scout or your soldier jumps them, then that's good. If they're scout speaking and you guys take them down, that's good. But, um, there's not really much you can do as a pyro unless... unless you guys, like, don't have uber advantage, then... And if you guys don't have uber advantage, then... you can just be ready to air blast them, because they'll obviously push out from, like, either... like, this choke or shutter. It's the only thing I can really think of. Like, there's not much you can really do on... 
and when holding in lobby like you can be like pretty aggressive and like go all the way into secret or not secret um water or whatever the place is underneath but that's kind of dangerous like just going all the way to last and trying to be aggressive like if you're trying to like be sneaky this is a sight line and you'll probably get called out if you're not if you're like trying to cross so yeah you can go into water or whatever it's called but it's i don't know if it's really worth it unless you're pushing with your team like this is a flank with like your scout or soldier isn't really smart in my idea because then you just give them advantage in numbers you don't really want to do that that's why I don't really like, like holding lobby or river because you just can't really do anything until your team decides to do something or their team decides to do something. I'm talking a lot. You talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go into into river unless uh, unless we're pushing or something like that. Um, I don't know. For attacking second, like in the past, I've done a cheeky little play with the detonator, and I just walk in through here and jump up onto here. And then, like, use the bro like the nerfed extinguisher to do 80 damage to the medic or something. Uh, it's only worked like twice, and then the other times I get shot by a heavy. So I guess <laughs> don't do that. Um, okay, so this is something I did multiple times last season. If you're gonna go for this ammo pack, make sure the sniper isn't peeking here, because he will see you when you cross. There have been so many times when I cross to get the ammo, and then the sniper kills me. Or the health. Oh, what a class. Yeah, and then you're just like, oh, okay, I guess, um... I guess I'm dead now. <laughs> so, yeah, uh... I guess when, you're, when your combo's pushing in, if your combo pushes in through shutter, uh, check up yeah, here. Because that's, that's, that's you, you can jump up here as any class. So... Uh... La don't peek launch pad because there's a sniper class in the game. I mean, um, their soldier will probably peek you from launch pad, so yeah. just be ready to like reflect spam off your team. And it's not really yeah. hard; like the angle's pretty easy. So, especially if your sniper is peeking here, the soldier's gonna yeah. jump your sniper. Like, it it's yeah, it's a given. Oh, this reminds me of like this jump that like heavies and pyros make sometimes. Well, well not falling off the pipes, obviously, but yeah. sometimes if like you're defending last, like classes like that normally like can't get to last without being seen. They'll just like yeah. So I was doing it. Take this and just be wee. <laughs> um, sometimes I can just imagine a whole combo doing that and then just walking in through here, just uh, the most unexpected push in the world. I want to try to do that now on the skirt. So, uh, it's probably going to stalemate a bit in here, so like you said, watch for the spy if you're stalemating. Uh, keep keep an eye out behind you over here, because the spy can decloak over here, in this corner, back here. Uh, I mean, it looks like he has a lot of angles to get through, but... Like, you can just easily check, like, pretty much every route, and as long as you're, like, up here, there's really not much you can do unless he's coming in from river. Just, I don't know, like, when I when I think of, like, the spy on this point, it's not something that really concerns me, it's just something I have to be conscious of, because my medic really shouldn't have to, like, well, my medic shouldn't be dropping on this point, because it's really important. Yeah, of course. Uh, pushing, I guess, I mean, you just go... Pushing last. Yeah, pushing last. There's a bunch of things you can do for this one. And, um, so, most of the time, pyros just come under here with their flank, and just, like, come up under, and then just peek at the point, and, you know, press mess 2, our, our secret weapon that we don't tell anyone about. And then everyone at Mumble complains about the pyro class, and we have this oh, yeah. giant cheeky grin on our face. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, other than coming under, you can also come in through secret, which I like a lot too, because when you're pushing in through, like, this choke right here, it's really easy to, like, get caught out by something, but if you just, like, duck straight into secret, then it becomes, like, an area that's really optimal for Pyro to actually DM. Like, if you try and DM in, like, out here, then it's kind of annoying because it's a little open, but if you take, like, a scout into secret, then it just becomes so much easier for you because it's pretty impossible to miss a flare in this area. Unless you're me. Um, 
And their team will probably come in through Shutter, but you can come in through Shutter too. Something I like to do is, if my team decides to do Shutter for whatever, for whatever reason, I'll just like walk forward and air blast the pyro so he can't like air blast us from my team. Like I don't recommend pushing through Shutter though. I think River is a much better push, but yeah, like Shutter is gonna especially get shut out if a pyro exists like on the enemy team. So they're not retarded yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they have a mouse two button, then yeah. What's that? Mine doesn't work. What is? What's that wind thing? <laughs> um, um. Yeah. So defending, defending last. Um, this is uh. Kind of tricky. Yeah, I mean, I guess stay with your combo and check the spy spots. So on top of here, on top of here. Uh, yeah, here at the spawn. Yeah, at the spawn too. Um, if your spot is nice enough, like sometimes, sometimes, uh, bleh, sometimes uh, Okuma and Stabby will like call out the spy if they bump him and like choke, and they can just like come down here and get an easy spy pick or get their knife or something. But um, there's a lot of things spies can do on last. Like it's definitely more of a concern than like other points, I think. So just be watching, like. Dark corners, like I'm always telling people, watch your dark corners and check spy routes. Like if you're just casually checking, like under here, and if your team's holding their shutter and you just like kind of spray shutter and just like kind of be trying around, then it's kind of hard for spy to do something at that point. But it's still like a kind of a playmaking last because like as soon as something important like your medic goes down, that's pretty much the round. So it just depends, and make sure your team's always calling where their team is because. Nothing's more awkward than when your team's like holding close shutter expecting an Uber, then an Uber just comes from river and you're like, oh, <laughs> well that's awkward. Yeah. Just always have eyes on their combo, it's really important, especially the pyro, because like, even like, no matter where they push from, like you can always just stop it on this point. Like they push from river, you hug this corner and air blast, you push from shutter, you, you hug the corner and air blast, and you pretty much get, like, take no damage and just deny Uber and get people mad. Uh, yeah, so... When you when teams push in, they're probably gonna pressure the point a lot. Uh, who's like I don't know. Would you send a pyro to deal with the point being pressured? Um, if if it's not okay, yeah. I uh, I didn't phrase that very well. I think I get what you're saying. Like, optimally, I'd rather deny their Uber and just trust my teammates' DM to take care of the point. But if it gets to the point where after the uber is denied and like I'm still alive and in good health, I'll probably just jump on the point and like do a bunch of damage. Because if you're like right here just doing this, you'll probably get a few frags. Probably. That's all. That's all you have to do, by the way. Yeah. Just literally press your panic button. Uh. Okay. So. So. So we get to. We're on last, and we defend last. So pushing in the pushing the lobby in second eventually. I, I guess like if the other team pushes in the last and you're feeling good to push out, like you have numbers advantage. So getting into lobby shouldn't really be a problem. You can just walk with your combo with your flank. Uh, it's important to make sure you have control of this whole place, not just lobby, and then yeah. they can walk in the river. Uh, pushing in the second, yeah. Snipers. Um, by the way, if you're gonna be pushing out into lobby, just make sure someone's defending last. Like, spy oh yeah. Awkward. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like. To you. Keep keep your ng or somebody on on uh on last, and then you can just kind of go and push out. What's fun about like pushing into second though is like you can just kind of abuse the corners some more. Like if your team is like getting ready to push out and like their team's just all sitting around here in their shutter, then you can just like. You know, abuse your corners again and just like do damage, peek out, air blast them, peek out, air blast them. You can do that from like pretty much any angle. Cause like, say your combo's like up here and like their team's like right here. Like, mm, actually, no, that's wrong. I was trying to think of an example where you could like use this like passageway that flanks like from from Big Door, but nothing came to mind. I just said something stupid. But yeah, there's like just a lot of like angles you can just approach this lobby from. Like, you don't have to follow your combo per se. You can you can like go through river. You can come. Oh yeah, that spot. <laughs> no. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Check this. Uh. Uh. First. Okay. Just a quick tangent. I want to shout out to my uh, friend Valvi. He does the pyro movement repertoire. Valvi. Yeah. He has a. Uh, I've been helping him out. 
just watching the rough draft, making sure he didn't miss any. That's in there, so expect all the people who watch the pirate movement repertoire to see that and try and abuse it. So yeah, shout out to him. Shout out to Lovely. Uh, okay, but, uh, continue. Um, yeah, there's just basically a lot of angles you can work with as a pyro. Just don't be afraid to abuse your corners and make sure you're doing damage when it's given to you. Like, what I mean by that is, like, if you have a chance to do damage and get out, then do it. If you have a chance to do damage and, like, not take damage yourself, then that's good. That's free damage. So just abuse your free damage when you can. Alright, so... Um, yeah. P pushing into second. This is a little tricky if you're a pyro and there's a sniper on the enemy team again. What a class. Yeah. Um, when I'm like in second, I don't really like coming out of shutter. I'd rather just go big door and like try and either flank their sniper or anything like flank wise. Because it like this is just the kind of area that's like out in the open and kind of hard to deal with as a pyro, and you'd just be better off in big door because there's just so many corners and easy spots to abuse. And plus, like you can easily just make a flank by just coming out of this door. And if their combo's like right here, you can just wait till you're next to them and then do some damage. Yeah, and if you want to like get ground on the choke here, then you your best bet is coming out of coming into big door and then just hugging this wall, because they're not gonna see you probably. Mm -hmm. But like, if you're but, out here by your, like if you're out here by the way, I hope your combo is like pushed up in front of you. Oh yeah. There's really no reason for a power to ever be ahead of their combo. That's really important too. Like you should just let your demo in heavy, like take charge and if you deem you don't need to be there, then go on the flank. But if you're gonna be there, make sure you're not like taking damage for no reason. Yeah, I I did that too much when I was on uh, JK. Like, I just felt like my combo wasn't going fast enough, so I would just run in <laughs> and then probably die and lose. But sometimes not lose, so... Sometimes get a lot of damage. Yeah. But, yeah, so... I, retaking second really isn't something that's the Pyro's strong suit, I would say. Because it's just huge. Yeah, I think the Pyro strong suit on this map is just pulling off stupid flanks and people asking why Pyro is a class in Mumble. I mean, that happens regardless. It's true. It happens anytime. Yeah, so... I, did we talk about pushing into, like, mid if it's from a stalemate or something like that? Um, I don't think so, but basically you're going to need Uber. And you're probably yeah. pushing through this choke, and it's probably best to give the enemy pyro down but like i said before you can always just um if your team is pushing and their pyro is like some sort of cliff or just get them out of the way because once you do that and you might need a flash you might not like they probably won't be shooting at you but once you get their pyro out of the way then your team's free to move and take ground they want to with the uber rather than just like get stuffed in a corner so, I'm, I'm sorry I lagged, but you were saying just air blast the enemy pyro. Yeah, just, like, I do that yeah. regardless if I move it or not, because I trust my medic to flash me if I get in danger, but... That's and, why I was yeah. before, like, if you shouldn't be taking free damage, because when your team wants to push, you shouldn't really be, like, being like, hold on, I need health. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Or really taking much of the uber if you don't need it. That's what yeah. Nersi told me after you left JK, he said... You would be way better if you didn't take as much of the Ubers. So I stopped taking Ubers. Probably doesn't want to give me the Ubers, he just gives them to Enigma. I'm sad. <laughs> it works, but no boost for me unless it's on defense. Like, there's times where Harbour is like, just like, Cats, you deny him. I'm like, okay. And he'll just tank me. And that's all you really need against, like, if you have your corners and you haven't taken damage before and you have ammo. Yeah. Yeah. But you're pretty much gonna need Uber to push through a stalemate. And it'd help if you have, like, track of Uber advantage, but I know, like, lower division teams don't do that as often. So it's okay if you don't, like, track the Uber, but be preferred if you can just, like, push on them and they're, like, overextending in your choke. And just, like, kind of roll over them if possible. But it's all situational. There's not really, like, any cookie cutter guidelines I could give about this map because it's just, like, you need to be here now. It just changes depending on who's down and what point and who's up, yada yada. There's just too many things to talk about. Yeah, so I suppose we should shout out the the not public yet Pyro FAQ. Yeah. Uh, I I hope we can get it released 
today or not today, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Probably do tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, bas like basically we compiled a list of all the questions we guess we get asked really frequently into a Google Doc, and just like answers that we all approve of, hopefully. Uh, I got I got almost every pyro and platinum to help with that one. That was a really good idea. So, I like so yeah. It's like really tough questions. Like, how do I get better at reflex? Uh, play the game. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, but how? And I'm like, well, goddamn it. Okay, well, yeah. So, I I hope we have some questions in chat because that was really short. That was like less was than really thirty short. minutes. Yeah, I kind of hoped to have a third person here to, uh, to yeah, also answer the questions, but I guess I lost my team leader touch of reminding everybody about every scrim twice a day. So... Uh, yeah, I just kind of talked a bunch, like, I don't know if you have anything <laughs> else to add, but... Not really, I mean, like you said, this really depends on what your team wants you to do as well. Like, every map does, but this map, like... Especially? Uh, yeah. Because... And you have, like, free roam of this map, but at the same time, you just need to just know where you need to be at the right time. Yeah, there are some very important parts where you just kind of need to be with your combo, or with your flank, maybe. Mm -hmm. But, uh... I mean, there isn't really many special things on this map as Pyro, because it's not, like, payload, it's 5 CP, which isn't really the best f for Highlander. I mean, it's okay. It's still maybe. Yeah, you're... We're probably gonna see a lot of, like, hour and a half matches. Probably. Just, oh god. Depending on the teams. The yeah, players. depending on the matchups, like... But... Oh, I don't want the hour, the hour-long scrims again. I I like the scrim lengths of payload and cough. Well, I'll be scrimming you guys on Sunday 8:30, and we're probably gonna do two halves because we both have at 9:30. So. Oh yeah. Ready for two hours of Kelly Rush. Oh, oh yeah. I'm I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready because I'm playing with a good team now. Not to say JK wasn't good. JK just wasn't good. Like, okay, they weren't great. I, they, yeah, they weren't high plat, okay, but... But they were good. Yeah, they were good. They were my friends, so... I don't know. We don't have any questions in chat. Are there questions from chat? Please. Please. We should have gotten someone else. Yeah, I probably should have, but I didn't know until 15 minutes ago, or 15 minutes before that Satan wouldn't be making it. John. Could have asked Geosis or Johnny or Adam. Yeah. I mean when I asked Geosis to do the round table he declined, so I'm guessing he's not really interested in doing streams and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Uh but I probably could have asked like I don't know, Fathom or somebody. How do I get good at reflex? says Mr. Fizzle. <laughs> <laughs> it's with a with a cap on the end. Oh, okay, okay. Here's, here's a good question that we didn't answer in the FAQ, but it's still a good question. Any tips on ammo management? Um, so... Well, mostly you'll be wasting your ammo when you're, like, looking for spy or, like, trying to get close to somebody. So, what I like to do, and this was told to me, like, a long time ago, and I still kind of remember it, like, when you're checking, like, a spy route, like, say you're just holding mid, right, or you're just on mid, right? and you're just kind of looking for this spot, you're kind of turning around. Instead of like just wasting ammo, like spraying something, just kind of turn around and give it like a few puffs and a few puffs, and that way you'll conserve ammo much better and maybe fire flare, like a possible hiding spot. Um, that's the other situation I listed when you're trying to get close to somebody. Whenever you're playing any class at all, ever, um, always wait until like you're right next to somebody if you're going to flank them and then start doing damage so you're silent and they don't hear you because like, the flamethrower especially is really loud, and just stay right there for a second, like, near this ammo pack. Like, say you're like a scout, and I see you from all the way over here, right? And you don't see me, you'll probably see me if I start doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you'll probably hear me like, oh my god. Yeah. So it's best if you just like, wait until you're right next to the person before you do that. 
Uh, so my tips for ammo management. Um, well, this is kind of how I do it. If I'm below 200 ammo, I'm looking for an ammo pack. And I'm probably going to take an ammo pack if I'm below, like, 200 ammo. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not very good at ammo management, and I take a lot of ammo packs from people that need them. But I guess, like, at 100, you probably really want an ammo pack, but below 150, you should probably be looking for one. Well, the good thing about taking ammo packs and, like, being kind of eh about ammo is like when you take an ammo pack, you're taking that from the enemy spy as well. Like, that's yeah. more like great than when like you just take every ammo pack and then the spy just like decloaks awkwardly near your team. It's like, oh hey! So or, I all the ammo. Or your heavy runs out of ammo in a fight yeah. and then and then you um, feel bad. That reminds me, whenever I ring for KD, like Jared and I just do this thing, like, like, um, we just say that we're taking like an ammo pack. Like, he'll say, I'm taking this big ammo pack and then I'll say it. And then we'll just kind of like know when the ammo spawns. Yeah. Like, just go off that. So you could do that too. You could just say I'm taking this this big ammo pack near whatever. I guess it's like it's not that like important as long as you're as long as you're having ammo for the pushes, you yeah. should be okay. <laughs> That's what you really need it for. Like nothing's more awkward than like when Harp is like, "Cats, you deny him. I have no ammo." <laughs> yeah. So. Another load or another question we didn't answer from potassium. Uh, when do you switch loadouts as pyro? Well, I mean, uh, it depends. Like, if I have bad ping, I might switch to shotgun, or I might play like flares in the past or whatever. Flares in the past. Yeah. Um, I don't really switch loadouts in like competitive unless I'm like playing European pyro, which I'll probably never do again in my life. But if I was <laughs> playing Euro pyro, I ran shotgun because I couldn't hit flares at 100 plus ping, but the only other times where I'll switch loadouts is like if in, I'm in a pub and all these people get upset that I'm playing pyro in a pub and then they all go like shotgun pyro, it's just like, that's the only times I really think of when I'll go shotgun. I also went shotgun during the finals because like people were complaining about Satan and I felt really bad, so because we didn't have like an actual heavy, I felt like I had to take care of Satan, so I just ran shotgun to shut him down and he didn't really do much in upward. <laughs> so that was just a show section. I wouldn't have done that like if it, like it wasn't grand finals. But uh, going on Euro Pyro, I rang Euro Pyro one time for Nursey Kresnik's team, and it was it was fun playing flares in the past. But I I I did I got a kill that I didn't expect to get that I probably couldn't do do on like. Don't pyro me. normally, yeah. I reflected a flare from the pyro and crit flared the engineer and killed him. Yes. And it, it, that's that was the extent of my European pyro career. I'm I'm retired from European pyro now. <laughs> the best reflex to ever get, or is when you're trying to flare punch a pyro and he just fires a flare and you f reflect flare punch him. Oh yeah, and then and then you're like, oh, I think I'm really good right now, and then yeah. It's literally the most. So, yeah, I mean, there's not really much more to to talk about now. I mean, there aren't there Pretty aren't much. yeah there aren't it's any like, more questions. It was like a giant map, and I just felt like I just breezed through it, but can't really yeah, think anything because I mean, everything just chalks up to oh, this class is down at this point. This class is down at this point. You should be here at this point. So yeah. yeah. Really wash. It's it's basically a map where the more you play it, the more you kind of understand where you need to be and when. And like the more game knowledge you have, then you can act better on it. Like if you know your flank is like down a few players, then obviously you probably shouldn't be with the, sitting with the combo who's still mating. But if your combo is getting ready to push in and the spy hasn't been around in a while, and like all these other things factors that are contributing, you should probably ugh, probably it's just like a bunch of it's just like a giant mental checklist you have to go off in your head that what you're gonna do and why it's the best thing to do. Yeah, and I suppose, like, it's a big map, but there's only certain places where you'll be fighting, really. Yeah. It's not like Payload, where you can talk about, like, blue side completely or red side completely. It's basically mirrored, so... Yeah, and... I don't know, like... The, yeah, I guess there's not really much more to talk about. What class do you fear the most? Asked Potassium again. Uh... Mm. Sniper? Mm, Sniper's just annoying. I don't know about. Mm, 
I'm gonna say like good scouts. I don't know, like does that count? The, the scouts are pretty yeah. scary. I the good scouts. Most most classes are pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. Like heavies don't scare me. Spy, mm, I guess spies with like who have like degrees, not degrees, <laughs> spies the cold dead ringer and ambassador can actually land their headshots. That's pretty scary too. They're like, well, I can't do anything. Yeah, any any spy that can land his shots is pretty scary. Um, I'm a, I'm afraid of heavies because they do a lot of damage to me. Well, heavies are easy, I think, because all you have to do to take care of a heavy is make sure he's distracted, and then once he's distracted, there's no way he can kill both of you, so you just rush him. Make sure he doesn't see you, obviously. You don't want to be that pirate who rushes at the heavy, holding down mouse, so I'm like, I'm gonna get you! <laughs> but, I guess, hitscan classes are... Yeah, hitscan. Yeah, hitscan's pretty scary. If you can just generally lump those together. Then again, engineers aren't really scary. Unless they're spam fest. Oh, right. oh yeah. Uh, spam fest will hit every shotgun shot and you just can't fight them anymore. I, I say that all the time that like I won't fight spam fest, but I really won't fight spam fest. Like, you can just see that mile yeah. from the gold mile away. It's like, nope. It, it's just like, he not only has a mini sentry, but he has a shotgun. So... I, I don't know what to do. Um, die slowly and painfully? Yeah, I'm. it's not even slowly. <laughs> but, I yeah. I just imagine that, like, Enigma, like, right next to him. Ugh. It's disgusting. Yeah, I mean, at least with a scout, you can hit a flare and maybe kill him. Right, you just hit a lucky flare as he jumps into it. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, here's another one. When you are reflecting, do you focus on negating damage or using the reflex to do damage? Hmm. Um, well, when I reflect, I only do it when it's gonna hit me or my teammates. Like, there's not really any point in reflecting a spam that's not gonna hit anything. So, there's that, and whenever you're, you're reflecting something, you can always like, just, like, point your crosshair, like, where it's going. Like, if, if you've f shot a flare at me, and you were looking at me, but you can just like kind of turn and like direct it somewhere, but I don't really aim to do damage with it unless I'm like trying to fight a soldier or something, but even then you're already staring at the soldier so you'll eventually do damage anyway. Yeah, I mean, I guess when I reflect, like, I I, I don't know, like it's a 50-50 shot at whether or not the ref reflex gonna go like straight up or straight down, or... Or, like, actually go you. somewhere, yeah, or, you know, backwards, because <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a thing, just backwards reflex. From both angles, like, you can reflect a rocket behind a soldier, and you can reflect a rocket, and it goes behind you. So, yeah, I mean, I guess, like, I always just kind of aim at the choke and reflect and hope for the best. Gotta get them sick reflect plays. The best reflex are the ones you got in the enemy pyro. It's like, oh, thanks! Yeah, it's like, I, I meant to do that. That was completely yeah. intentional. Like, uh, I think I killed Satan one time with a reflect rocket, but I didn't mean to. Aww. Did they nerf the re- sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. Oh, I'm- Miles asked again, did they nerf the ra radius of the compression blast? No. I don't think so. The c think it's still- Yeah, it's still huge cone rectangle thing around you. Yeah, the, I think it's a rectangle. Is it a rectangle? I don't know. All I know is you can reflect things completely next to you. Mm-hmm. That, that's fair. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we can call it there. It's 40 minutes. We extended another 10 minutes. Cool. But Yeah, I, I guess that's the pyro map review for this week. It, it's gully wash, so... Both sides are, yeah, both sides are the same, and, yeah, I, if it was payload, we would have had a lot more to talk about. But. Yeah, just remember to not be afraid to peel away from your combo when it's necessary, and take, like, rounds and abuse your corners. That's pretty much, like, the most general advice I can give about this map. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna end the stream now, then, so thanks, everybody, for watching, uh, 